lessons, even if you had been here in 1974 and asked some of my teachers what my future held for me, it's almost certain some of them would have said a jail cell. <laughs> Instead, tonight, I stand here as living proof that one, notwithstanding taxes and death, nothing is certain. Two, that it pays to follow your dreams. And three, that it's always good to plan for contingencies. After graduating at the bottom of my class, I kicked around Oak Ridge for about five years, going from party to party, not having any vision of my future except what the next weekend held. Then literally, like a flash out of the blue, a dream was born and my life was changed forever. The form this dream took was a Navy Blue Angels flight demonstration that left me with such awe that that very same day, I was resolved to go out and become a fighter pilot. <clears throat> so, I left my career at the A&P behind, <laughs> and off I went to enroll in college at the tender age of 23 where I joined the Air Force ROTC and was granted a pilot slot in a very highly competitive field. After two, after two more years, I graduated high school and was given my flight training assignment in Columbus, Mississippi. And I sat there not believing that I was about to live my dream. That dream ended abruptly several weeks later when I failed my flight physical several weeks before I was supposed to start my training. Now that left me with a big problem because I had been so focused for so long on achieving this goal that I had no other plans with which to pursue. I was lost. Lucky for me, the Air Force had a plan B. That plan B was they offered to train me to fly satellites rather than aircraft. And since I had no other ideas of what to do, and I had no idea what that job meant, I took them up on it since they were going to send me to Sunnyvale, California to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Therefore, even though my dream was over, the dream, the pursuit of that dream, had created an opportunity that would have never existed if I hadn't pursued it in the first place. Now, I would agree that being a space cadet is not nearly as exciting as punching holes in the sky strapped to an F-15. However, there's still a little bit of adrenaline when you stand up in front of a group of NASA engineers and astronauts or Nobel Prize caliber scientists, and you realize they're interested in what you have to say. Also, flying satellites is a lot safer. <laughs> Unlike my fellow inductee, who I believe is far more qualified for this honor bestowed upon me tonight than I am, I don't get shot at when I go to work. And I don't have to pass a physical every six months just to continue working. But that's just my story. All of you students here, you're set off to go out on your own journeys and make your own stories. And it's highly probable that you'll face adversity along the way in the pursuit of your goals. But your very presence here tonight indicates that you have the sense of purpose and strategic vision that will help you get through a lot of the difficulties you will face as you go after these goals. And my hope for all of you is that these qualities will be with you for the rest of your life. They will serve you well. So welcome to the end of your beginning. Now go out there, pursue those dreams, and make your story epic. And then come back here in a couple of decades and join me on the wall, we'll hang out. <laughs> in closing, I'd like to thank Mrs. Bernadette Barrett, who is not here, for nominating me in the Old Bridge High School Association that accepted that nomination. I'd like to shout out to my brother and my sister-in-law, 
you might know as Mr. and Mrs. Divine, but I know as Drew and Jane. I'd like to shout out to my daughter, who surprised me today. I had no idea she'd be here. And I, she even went to the car to get here, so. <laughs> I'd also like to apologize belatedly to the Madison Township High School <laughs> Board of Ed and all the educators <laughs> for being such a jerk. <laughs> and I would also like to point out I owe this apology more than anybody to the man sitting in the front row, Mr. Joseph Sweeney, who suspended me at least 20 times. <laughs> dedicate the honor of this special night to the person that made it all possible, who stood by me during the dark days and guided me through the wilderness to safely emerge on the other side. Thanks, Mom. This is for you.